Welcome. It's been a while since my last video. Had a bit of a challenge. One of my inverters blew up on me and uh, had to replace my whole inverter system. And uh, I still have to try and figure out how to commission it to work properly with my battery since the battery BMS doesn't want to uh, communicate with my inverter. So I eventually got it figured out and sorted. The set as let us set battery set up and I got it working to charge the batteries pretty well. Now the reason well, my bump tool is on the table again, uh, I need to make a quick change tool post holder for it. And I was going to go with my one of my old designs and uh, when I made these, I had a comment, uh, I think it's almost a year back, that I, one of the viewers said that my overhang is way too far from the tool post. Now, I, I do take your comments to heart and I do appreciate it. So, in the spirit of, of that, I've decided to go with a smaller chunk of steel. You can see it's... Uh, substantially smaller. I'm going to use it in this orientation. So all that I need to do is, if you look at this one, my bolts were running in a row past the adjustment screw. Now with a little bit of clever manipulation, I can still have the, the adjustment screw in the middle, but instead of having your three grub screws on the end, you can just in this case, I only need two grub screws to keep the bump tool in place because it's already uh, got a register. So the force on the grub screws won't be that high. But if I make any tooling of this kind in future, I'll just put two screws on top and the bottom, or front or back, whichever way you prefer to use it. And then uh, cut the dovetail in the back and there should be enough clearance in me to keep the old uh, tool in intact and uh, off my offset. So yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, this block was uh, mold quite a long time back. Uh, and was uh, cut off. To the, what I've done is I made a putting plate holder for it or with it it was a long piece, I cleaned up the whole thing and just uh, cut it off with the axle at the time so all I need to do is just to mull off this end and what I'm going to do is uh, use my uh, cup uh, grinding to a disc to see if I can improve the surface finish before I cut the dovetails in on the slot.
That's a perfect finish. I think I just found my favorite uh, or new favorite finishing tool and this is a typical annual finish and this is a finish provided by a, this bowl grinding disc not bad for a 36 grit uh, disc Okay, I'm gonna rough out the slot for the dovetail front center. Now I'm gonna I've got a six millimeter carbide end mill in here. So I'm gonna cut the ten milli a uh, thirteen millimeter step over from center to it in each direction. And then I'm gonna cut it around uh, eight millimeters deep.
was hogging away at, at this block, uh, roughing out the uh, recess here. And I didn't notice that the uh, envelope was creeping out of the collet as the collet was heating up and expanded. And uh, after I loaded chips away, I saw that uh, the envelope went deeper than it was supposed to. And it went deeper by about 1.3 millimeters. So when you're uh, running at high speeds, uh, like in my case, 1600 RPM, be mindful of, of the heat that goes into the collet and the fact that it expands and your animal can creep out. So now to uh, take the stop again uh, to size so that the, the depth of this uh, recess is only 8 millimeters. So I need to uh, remove 1.3 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is remove 1 millimeters with the animal and then surface grind it again uh, to spec. Right, because of my blunder earlier on, the cutting is recessed too deep for the dovetail. The meat that I've got here is a little bit uh, thin. So what I've decided to do, instead of uh, cutting it to full depth, I'm only going to uh, make a register for the tool to sit in. And then drill two holes through the tool and into the body of the uh, tool holder to keep it in place. The recess will just keep it from rocking and the bolts will uh, obviously keep it uh, seated and permanently mounted. This is a dedicated uh, tool holder so I'm not going to use it for anything else. Just changed my mind again. I decided instead of using bolts, I'm gonna, I've made it a press fit. So what I'm going to do is going to put a little bit of epoxy inside the slot and then press it in. There's about a 0 0.03 millimeter uh, interference fit. Okay, tool is in. And the dovetail came out pretty nice. It's pretty straightforward to cut dovetails. Now you just need to do a little bit of maths. If you don't have a height cage to measure the depth of your uh, dovetails, then uh, or your dovetail cut it, 
and you need to do a little bit of math to determine for a certain depth how deep you must cut your uh, dovetail in the side. Other than that, the tool came up pretty great. The surface finish, I'm very happy with it. I think that uh, bow grinding disc did a fantastic job of uh, finishing off the ends or the sides. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked with this. Now I can free up another tool holder because it doesn't help to have a bump tool that you quickly need to use and you first have to uh, take out another uh, tool out of its holder to get this thing up and running. Now, I decided not to put the bolts in here. I've made it a press fit and I had to use quite a lot of pressure to get it in. And I do have a bit of epoxy in the back and some pressed out. So this thing is going nowhere. Alright, I hope you enjoyed. Till next time.